I'm your host, Pitprecht. This is a technical look at how I've done the 10 times spawns and the 100 to 200 count wandering hordes. Small disclaimer to this, this is purely made up and it appears to work. Uh, so if you're interested to figure out how I did that, um, I'll show you here. And then if it works on yours, great. If it busts your game, I'm sorry, it busts your game. This is experimental and a lot of fun uh, so far. Um, so with this out of the way, uh, let me kind of show you the two things that I've done. If you want to ride along and take a look at the config with me, um, maybe there's some things that can be improved. Uh, this is game version 1.0. Okay, so the two things that we've done are the XML 10x spawn settings. This is your XML file only. Uh, mod 100 to 200 count wandering hordes. This is a fun one. I'm still working through this, so to get some peer review on that is, is warranted. So the first thing is configuration directory. This is going to be for your XML, for your spawn settings. Uh, this is the directory you want to go into here. Uh, C program files x86, Steam, Steam apps, common, seven days to die, data config. And in there, you're going to have a file called spawning. Uh, so we're going to go there. Uh, that's what this is. Let me get it usable so you can see it. I don't know if this is valuable, but I put this in already. Uh, this is changing it from 100 to 200 and also value to 30. Um, I'm pretty sure this, this matters because it allows you to get an upper cap going, but it doesn't overload it. So 200 is fine. And then what you'll do is you'll just 10x each one. So if this says one, you'll just put a zero next to it. Uh, so you do that for each biome, just this part. Remember, leave this part alone because that's your dead chance i'm assuming i'm just guessing at most of this stuff but here's 10x right here again and then no no max count well one max count is where i started and the higher up you go the more interesting it starts to get so right now it's 40. Uh, i changed these values to 50. Uh, i didn't do the territorial range Again, I don't wor worry about the territorial range. I don't want them coming after me all the way across the map. I don't want to have like four dozen just random just coming after me, which might be fun. This is where it gets interesting. You see how it jumps up to 120, you know, uh, per per spawn. This is just the spawns. This isn't the wandering hordes. This is just the spawns. Not inside POIs, but see, you just go down and you do that like that. 10x every single one of those but this setup kind of makes the outside as dangerous as the inside and sometimes i have to take refuge inside a poi that i'm like an infested that i'm supposed to be going and do doing i'm glad to get there because there's so much happening outside i've had it where i've had to defend the inside from the outside just as a matter of event and it's like pretty amazing to me zombies large Total alive. Total alive. Now, I didn't mess with the spawn on the... Uh, let me go to the bottom. I didn't mess with the uh, screamers. I don't think I messed with the scouts feral either. So everything from the screamers down, I didn't touch. So if you have scouts feral, I left them alone. And if you have scouts radiated, I left those alone. So if you want to make the game a little harder, it looks like, now that I'm reading through this a little more, you could probably go ahead and give this a you know x of whatever um but i didn't do that um which is good because it might not have been good with as much stuff as i've already done impossible if you do too many screamers it's just nuts but if you if you up this the fer the ferals and woof, that could become interesting uh, I, but i didn't modify that at all uh, so i'll leave the entire list of the spawning xml up uh so you can see it um let me just scroll through this real quick so you, so you can just get a slow capture if you want. YouTube doesn't let me copy this up in the, into the description because it has certain brackets it doesn't like. So I was going to copy it up without the brackets, but then I confuse folks because I'm like, oh, are you supposed to have the brackets or not? I mean, I would get confused, right? If you, somebody copied something up there and I tried to make it work and 
there was parts of it missing and you had to know that the brackets had to be there. That'd just be annoying. You'd paste it in and it would break and then you'd be like, I got it broke and you don't know. And yeah, so I, I try not to do that. Whatever I'm going to um, show, I want to make sure that you see the whole thing. Okay, so that is the spawning XML. That's the 10 times spawning XML. Okay, so that's, that's the easier part um, for me. Uh, and then you go to the mods, which is an actual mod that you download. It's called War Wandering Horde Frequency. So if you look at this page, uh, this is your seven, di seven Days to Die mod, Wandering Horde Frequency. It's pretty famous, you know? Uh, but there's a... Not that I'm trying to get famous, I, I'm, I'm good. But you have download for 1.0. Uh, and then you have this kvh one dash wandering horde frequency and this is your download for the mod so the problem with the original setup here is uh the dll that came with it uh was broken uh so what would happen is if you install it and then you hit the game and then you press f1 at the start of the game but right before it loads in you can see all the system log you can see at the top you scroll up you can tell that this mod didn't load there's yellow on it you know mod didn't load and it's noted in here somewhere there's a fix right here and you can download it that's your dll 8e71f54e for the rebuilt to fix config bug 8e71f54e and it'll show you the difference there's an original file and there's a download modified file. And this is the thing, you need to get the download modified file. And you have to look in the commit to get to it. You download modified file, Windows is gonna complain, it's an actual DLL, but that's the one you need. Okay, so that will make it work on this version of seven days today. At least it did for me, and I don't see any negative side effects, and I've been using it for like, what, three weeks, four weeks? Maybe I'm infected, I doubt it. You know, I think I'm okay. <laughs> so kudos to fixing this. I'm I'm very, very impressed. Thank you. Um, okay, so that's going to bring me to uh, the place that I found how to do the Wandering Horde. Uh, so kudos to Talman Brad Gameplay. Thank you. So what you do is you change the values of the WHH hours min and WHH hours max to reflect when you want the next horde to start after the last horde ended. And if it's day zero, that's when the last horde ended. So it's like six hours to 12 hours is its range of when it could pop. So I modify that to give you to give you some room because you are making your, your hordes bigger. So you're not like, you know, you can clear it and you can get to a peaceful environment, right? But it, it's pushed out. Instead of 612, it's like 1236, which is doable, you know? It's not overwhelming, it, it gets you. And then you change your property for your WHZ Zombie Min and your WHZ Zombie Mac to what you want it to be. Now I mentioned that you can specify the frequency, that's the whole point of this, the frequency that these wandering hordes actually appear and also the size of them. So how do we change that? Well, it might seem a little bit intimidating, but it's not that bad, really. We go into config and this is a little bit unusual. It says blocks. If I right click on that and say edit, for me, it's just opening it in Notepad. You might have Notepad++ or some other software, but you just need the basic Notepad. And the first thing we're interested in is this section where it says value six, value 12. And this is saying here with a value of six that after the previous wandering horde, six hours later, another one could arrive. However, it could be as late as 12 hours later. So if you want your horde to appear roughly every six hours at the earliest, or every 12 hours at the latest, you could leave those figures. Now in doing some experimenting with this myself, I found that you don't tend to get a wandering horde early on in the game. It might take two or three days. And also, even when set to one hour and two hours here, it doesn't work that way. There seems to be a bit of a cool off period that's built in that we don't seem to be able to do anything about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I'd like the wandering horde to arrive possibly every 12 hours at the soonest. And that'll be from the last time one arrived, but as long as, let's say, 36 hours. 
So that's given us quite a big window, but it's not so big that it's like waiting seven days for a horde to arrive. The next option down here is you can see it says zombies minimum and zombies max. So there we have the minimum amount that will arrive in a wandering horde and the maximum amount. So that's pretty obvious. And what we can do there is I'll, I'll put that to 14. So I think a typical wandering horde is about seven. So I'm going to double that uh, and then I'm going to make that one 28. So it could be between 14 and 28. Obviously put the values in that you want. Now make sure you save this file. I just go into file and save and then we'll close that down your possible minimum zombies at 15 you use 15 if you want your your max zombies at 35 you can hit 35. i think you can make the values the same but i didn't check so for me i have a set to um uh, 12 and 36 and 100 and 200 value now this is probably ridiculous um, I'm checking to see if I can scale. I mean, that's a whole different level of gameplay that I haven't really done yet, except for like in game where I die pretty quick and I'm permadeath, so I don't usually get practice. So this is going to help me get practice from like day two or three, just especially in the weight wasteland, just nuts levels of and it's great. And if, if you have your your build uh, sized properly, uh, you'll be able to handle it and clear it. It's not like it's going to keep coming and coming and coming and coming. It'll It'll clear it and you'll have peace and you can move on into the area and do your crack a book or whatever it is. It's going to give you time if you can dispense of the horde. So that's the setup. Uh, first, you have your spawning. Make sure you change your spawning to 10 times those values. Make sure your spawning is only those values. You don't want the these values because they have dead chance. You don't want that. You only want to change the values here on each setting. So we know that and we don't touch the bottom screamers and we don't touch the bottom scouts radiated or feral unless you want to. Okay. Then you go into your blocks XML um, and you get, which is in your mods. So let me show you how to get to your mods. So your mods are gonna be inside the Uh, uh, local C, program files, x86, Steam, Steam apps, common, seven days to die, and mods. And you want to download the mod straight from the site uh, and then unzip it here. And it'll come with the original DLL, which won't work. Then you download the one from the commit and then you just rename the original, original underscore original and then you just keep the original name from the, the the updated one and they look the same size but there's something different <laughs> and then you go into your config and you can and you change your blocks here and this file here you hit open and you can see this is all it is and that's where you're going to change your properties here and here that's it. So you have your spawning XML, which does your 10 times. It's much, much bigger. Then you have your blocks of XML, which is very, very small. But your blocks XML is part of the mod that you downloaded into the mods folder from KHV1 Wandering Horde Frequency. And you're going to replace the DLL from the commit site to the one that's here. And your commit site is here. I'll leave links for all this so you can see it for your fixed DLL. And then you can find that again from your seven days to die mods wandering horde frequency. And that's going to give you the download link here. That's going to open up the Azure site, which is going to give you your wandering horde. You want to download the whole thing. Then you want to click on your commits here, 8E71F54E for the rebuilt to fix config bug. And then I downloaded the modified file. That's that's pretty much it. That's how the 10X is, is made. And the Wandering Hordes are set. 
Um, and so far, it's a it's a kick in the pants. This is so much fun. I gotta tell you, <laughs> there's got to be a better way to handle this large number of mobs. Um, and I'm just not thinking through it properly and just gutting it out. So much fun. Anyway, thanks for joining me. Um, uh, I'm gonna go and put up the next video here in uh, about a day after I'm finished up recording. Uh, this was for 10x spawns and uh, wandering horde uh, 100 to 200 count. Uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.